Skaldic Archive. Uh, how are you doing today? Well, how art thou? Thou that was pretty good. How are how are thou, Thor? All oh, good, all oh, good. A bit sick. My voice is messed up. Um, but uh, yeah, glad to be here and glad we could have Robert on. Lots of cool things to talk about. And um, was there anything specific for this uh, time of year that people would have been doing or coming out that people at home watching this would be partaking in? Well, we just had a full moon a couple of days ago. So if you, um, you know, study the Swedish sources in particular, um, they had something called disting, um, disting uh, the word dis for disir and ting for thing. So that was a couple of weeks ago. I'm making an educated guess here, but the Saxons who, you know, I'm, my last name Sass is the old Saxon word that means Saxon. They had a thing once a year in Marklo, and we know that according to the historical sources, it was before they decided they were going to go to war. Um, so the war season starts in summer. So I believe that most likely the Saxons and Swedes were having their all things at the same time. So that would have been the last full moon. And this upcoming full moon um, is Sigurblot. Um, we do have reference to that on the continent. Uh, if I scroll up, is the Indiculus Superstitionum et Paganarum. It mentions a victory moon. Um, and Sigurblot is a victory bloat. Uh, so um, this is the, the bloat that starts summer. And it's typically three full moons after the Yule bloat, which is the bloat for midwinter. So... Um, Anglo-Saxon heathens sometimes call it Oster uh, because of a historical source named Bede. Um, I personally think that um, those bloats were done at the same time, whether it's Sigur bloat to the Scandinavians or Sigur bloat to the old Saxons or Oster, which we assume a blow went with it to the Anglo-Saxons. I think the Germanic tribes had a lot more in common than they had differences. And that was a very holy time. All the Germanic tribes had midwinter, for example. They all had two seasons. So this time of year is, you know, pretty much we're getting ready for the start of summer. That's very interesting. I, I had not heard of the, the Saxon source you mentioned that, that had something to do with a yeah, Seeger month, the victory month. But we we know that I think there's only like two maximum Norse sources that speak about the Seeger Brut, and we don't know ex exactly what it is, but we'd, they, they, they've theorized it's yeah, the three full moons and it's the start of the summer. So that would be the next full moon in April. But that's very interesting. I didn't know the Saxons. Do we know anything else about how they celebrated it? Or was it just called like Victory Month? And that's just about all we know. You know, I hate to say that's all we know, but it, sadly, it's the right answer. This is, you know, with only 21 old Saxon sources that survive, mm -hmm. we have to borrow the Norse because, as I said, the, these tribes are more similar than they're different. Um, but sadly, we have to cast because... Uh, Thank goodness there are more Norse sources that survived. Um, but, but yeah, that's all we know. So it's uh, interesting. So like it's um, by, by most of the accounts we have, that's at least the Bluts or the high festivals in the Norse sources, they had to do with a sacrifice and send some sort of sacred place um, and that would be on a hurdigit or like an altar the stone altar or it would be sometimes at a sacred tree or other kinds of sacred places like this even like wells or springs uh, we have records of but um, while we're on that type of subject because I think that's actually the most important for any modern people looking to practice while we're on the subject of sacred places uh, Robert, could you tell us a little bit about um, any of the continental European sacred places like Irminsul, uh, Thundarsbrunner, or um, the uh, Donars Oak? Um, and what kinds of uh, places were those, and how do we know that they were viewed as sacred places for these gatherings of what it would be? Well, we have archaeological evidence, and I've studied at those sites with a professional archaeologist, so I know a thing or two about those sites, the Irminsul, uh, Thor's Well. Um, both old Saxon sites that were destroyed. But we also know we have um, something called the Lex Saxonum, which means laws of the Saxons. So when Charlemagne conquered the Saxons and forced them to be Christians, he gave them a list of laws, things that they could and could not do. Of course, they could go to church. And of course, they could not worship by trees 
or springs or in sacred groves. These were outlawed. So we know that there had to be more holy places than just the old Saxon Irmensul and um, also the old Saxon Dunars Brunner or Thor's Well. And also just by the locations, because those both of those are in southern Saxony. There were plenty of Saxons living in the north of Saxony and the west of Saxony and the east of Saxony. They they all weren't going to walk 50 miles to go to a holy site. There was probably a holy site not far away. So there certainly were more, um, but the ones that are attested to would be Thor's Well um, and the Irmensul. And uh, the other one that you mentioned is... Um, the Donar's Oak or Thor's Oak. That was in the land of the Chatai, which is the neighboring heathen tribe of the Saxons. That was destroyed by St. Boniface. And it's important for us Saxon heathens because when the Irmensul was destroyed the following summer, the Saxons retook it. And then they tried to retake the, the Thor's Oak site, the Donar's Oak site, but they failed. But it tells me that the Saxons appreciated the other heathen tribes around them. So... Yes, it was mainly sacred groves and trees and springs were very important in terms of outdoor ritual. Okay, now quickly, I just don't want to, I mean, I'm probably going to sound like an idiot asking this, but are we able to define specifically what is a sacred grove? Well, I think we can um, because the descriptions that we have of them is that they were places that had lots of trees, but also a spring. Um, so, you know, in nature, I go out with my family and we find a place a away from, you know, we can't do it in a park unless it's a bit secluded because a lot of people wouldn't know what you're doing, especially if you're going to actually sprinkle blood or a substitute for blood, like alcohol on a tree. Um, but you know, I actually recommend people, I mean, if that's where ancestors historically venerated these deities, then we know that these deities accepted that sort of ritual historically. And therefore, I think it's important for us to emulate, um, because I hate to say it, you know, we don't have a lot of historical sources. And therefore, if we know that our ancestors did certain things when they worshiped our gods, um, they had more experience at being heathens than we do. Um, so that's my advice. And that's why I think it's important. Mm. One, one thing I also wanted to touch on while we have you here, it's a very, very important question that I think a lot of people would like to know if we could say there, there's lots of differences. I mean, at the basic core of it, um, the Germanic religion was at least the same or the same family of religions, right? So it can be as simple as changing the gods' names from instead of Thord, it would be Thunad or, or Donna or something like that. But if you could say the three most important things, maybe just pick three important things, differences from how the religion was practiced or what was believed in the in Scandinavia versus in Saxony or a anywhere else we have sources from, whether it be you know, England or or any continental European stuff, what are three main things that you've at least brought into your practice? Because I know you're, you're German and you maybe do things a little bit differently than the Norse would. Yeah, I can't say that we're overly different. Um, what I will say, um, like, the old Saxon poetry implies that they didn't use the term Ragnarok, they used the term Woodspellus. Now, when you compare the two, um, of course, the Norse Ragnarok starts with fire from Muspelheim. So the title might be slightly different, but how different was the Saxon Woodspellus from the Norse Ragnarok? That can be very much debated. Mm. Um, we also have an old Frankish poem, the Franks were the, to the south and to the west of the Saxons, called Muspili. Now, that's a Christian poem, but it's certainly related to the word Mutspelis or Mudspelheim. So, you know, the other Germanic tribes around the Saxons certainly did use the same word. We don't see the word Ragnarok, um, but from a linguistic perspective, Ragnar is related to the word to rain. So, you know, um, maybe there is a connection um, far more just because the words are a little different. I would say another difference 
would be, um, and this one I find very interesting, you know, we don't have the word nor near in Old Saxon, um, but what we do have is we have word and word yishkapu, which means word and word shapers. Um, they certainly are fulfilling the exact same things that the nor near uh, perform. And, you know, is this a difference? I mean, I certainly use the old Saxon terms, like it's better for me to say Thunar versus Thor, um, but how different were they? Let me throw this out uh, because I've been there with an archeologist, you know, I've, I've been to a museum and I've seen a sixth century Frankish belt buckle of Christ, but it was sold to a Saxon and it was found in Saxony. And how do we know this? Because someone took a knife and an engraving tool and they knocked out one of the eyes and they put a line through it. Mm -hmm. So it tells us that around the sixth century, 600 or so that the Saxons believed that Woden had one eye. So were these gods different from tribe to tribe? I mean, we have evidence in Germany that Woden or Odin had one eye. So we assume these stories were very similar and the concepts are largely the same, but the language like Bifrost versus road, the old Saxon sor uh, sources say road. Is that different from a rainbow bridge connecting the realms? Um, it's still something that can be walked on or flown through, so to speak. Uh, you know, I don't, I think um, there are some minor differences like the moon names in Bede's old English calendar are different, but yet very similar to the Norse moon names. Sometimes they match, you know, Sol Manuther, um, for sun moon or winter moon or winter full moon. Um, some of the terms are the same and some are different. And But does that mean the practice was different? So in terms of large differences, I don't really see them, which is why I feel like I could venerate with Anglo-Saxon heathens and Scandinavian heathens because we do share the same Germanic gods. Um, the differences, I think, in the end are very minor, and um, they could be language-based um, as well. Just, you know, like English has different dialects. They have more of a drawl in the South than we do in the North. You know, I think a Southerner might say New Jersey, but when I'm on the East Coast, they say New Jersey. <laughs> um, you know, so is this, you know, um, dialects of the same Germanic because, you know, all the Germanic languages are related to, and some of it is time, you know, um, in Sweden, heathenry lasted longer. Does this mean it continued to develop? Um, you know, did, did some of the terms slightly evolve in the 200 years in Sweden after, you know, the Saxon wars brought a forceful end to heathenry in Saxony? Um, I think these are things we'll never know the answers to. Um, but for the most part, it's the same. Some terms are different, but largely I think the belief system and, you know, I think if you went to a bloat in 800 common era in Saxony, it wouldn't be all that different from a bloat in Sweden. Mm. Um, I think they would be very similar. I think the Germanic tribes would recognize what they were doing and feel at home. And we also, I'll throw out one other piece of evidence, you know, the, the Royal Frankish Annals discuss Wittekin, the heathen leader of the Saxons, always running to the Franks. And we have evidence that Wittekin married a Danish king's daughter. So if Saxons and Danes could do ritual together and they could intermarry and they would be allies, the Danes tried to protect the Saxons when the Franks were attacking them. Uh, this means, you know, if they could be that close to each other, this certainly means that um, they saw Christianity as a common enemy and they saw each other as uh, people that they can intermarry with and do ritual together. So, you know, I've written articles, the differences between the two, but I do it more to gain interest and to educate. It's not because I'm trying to say we Saxons do things differently. Um, no, it's, you know, it, it brings good discussion and makes people want to read and you know, um, it's also not the same old, same old. I, I would say about 20% of my blog articles on are on holidays and bloat and symbol because that's how we 
venerate the gods. I like to talk about how we do our faith. Um, but, you know, I think I have 110 blog articles up. I mean, it might be hard for me to come up with 300 completely different subjects, <laughs> you know. So, but I think it's important to discuss those things. And I don't, I really truly, to summarize everything, I, I don't see a huge difference between bloat and Beowulf or even symbol, symbol and Beowulf versus symbol that we see in Heimskringla. They're very similar, far more similar than they're different. And, you know, I